Hi Sandy, hi Rosie, hi guys. I hope you guys are all having a good day. It's supposed to be really nice today in the 70s. Probably looks pretty out, pretty and sunny outside. I'm sorry um, if I'm not very chipper today. I had a very rough day yesterday, all day, all night. And this morning, I'm still going through it. My stomach. Oh, it was horrible. And I'm still suffering with it this morning, but I'm, I'm, you know, a little better right now. I don't gotta run right back to the bathroom again yet, so. I thought I was gonna collapse. I don't know how many times I got passed out. Everything started spinning. But I'm used to it. All right, let's get started with our um, prayer requests and our opening prayer. The people we need to pray for today is the same. We need to pray for Randy Post. He's got pneumonia. Really bad. We need to pray, to pray for Barb Post. She's, um, you know, she's in rehab at the nursing home. We need to pray for Christopher Serback. He did get home yesterday, so he is home. But he has to go every single day to get blood work drawn. And he has to go twice a week back to Cincinnati to get more tests done and stuff. But he is home. Limited activity and limited how many people's allowed around him, I guess. I don't know. But um, we need to keep Chris in our prayer still. Um, Sherman Crabtree for his whatever's wrong with his stomach. The doctor still has not called us back yet. And his cyst and his kidneys and his sinuses. Yeah, he's got him in his sinuses as well. Um, Kenny Wellman. He is suffering really bad from diabetes. He is like so skinny now. He looks like he's just very, very thin and weak. He's in a wheelchair most of the time. And when he's not, he's on a walker. And he's my age, I think, 35. And he's on dialysis for his kidneys already. And now he's got gastroparesis on top of that, so. And he's getting, he vomits very violently, which I know how that is, because I do too. And he doesn't like all that vomiting, but yeah, it's, it sucks. <laughs> Sorry for that word, but it's, that's what, it sucks. Because <laughs> I know what it's like, I've had it for a few years now. Let's see, we need to keep Melody. Melly Post, or Melly Post, Melly Ramey, her name is now, um, in your prayers. She's got pneumonia, and she's seven months pregnant. Well, she's got ten weeks to go, she said. Because um, she just wrote me today and said, I have 30 weeks today, I got ten weeks to go, and I am huge. So last I heard the baby weighed, old baby Olsen weighed two pounds in there. So hopefully he'll grow a lot more. Because when Kinsley was born, she was early and she was only four. And her other babies were only like five something, I think. Because she's always went early with them all. Okay, we need to pray for Sandy. Um, for strength and comfort because she goes through a lot of stuff. She has a lot to deal with. We, had, we need to pray for Bridget Boggs for um, strength and comfort and health reasons. And April and Linda Thacker for health reasons. They got a lot going on with their health that need, they, need, they need prayer. Um, Um, 
Sherman, can you think of anybody I missed? Uh, so you got everybody. I'm about to start writing this down. I'm sorry. Okay, guys. Um, those are the people that need our prayer. Father, please watch over the people that is on our prayer list today. Please touch all of them and heal them the way that they, they need to be healed. Only you know what they truly need and how to truly help them. So we pray that you watch over them all and help them all if you will, if it's your will, to make them all better. Amen. And Father, we ask you today, Father, to please watch over our Bible reading. Please watch over the people who are watching this Bible reading and let the words, your words, speak to them, speak to their hearts and souls, and they will feel your message in their hearts. They will know exactly, you know, what I'm what I am saying when I'm reading this so they will be able to understand your words and be like oh yeah okay now I got it you know and they'll take that if they feel it in their hearts and hopefully I pray take it and share your share the news of you and our brother Jesus with other people and then those other people will share with others and, and those people with others and so on. That is my hope. And I hope that I can just change even just one person's life with these Bible readings. If I can just bring one person to you, I would be overly thrilled. And so please watch over the ones watching this Bible reading today. And... We love you, Father. We love you, Brother Jesus. Hope you have a wonderful day in heaven. I'm sure every day for you is wonderful, though. Thank you for giving us such a beautiful day today. It sure is pretty out there. I see all the things that are so beautiful outside, trees and sky and the clouds and the pretty flowers and the birds and I can't picture how people think that you don't exist. They just think it was evolution, all this stuff just came to be, you know. I've never believed that. I don't believe that for a minute. I know that you're real and I know that you did it and Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything. And we love you. And I'm going to get started on this Bible reading. So please be with us as we read it. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, if you'd like to follow along today, we are reading in the New International Version, starting with Mark. Chapter 14 today, reading verses 1 through verse 21, we are getting close to the end of Mark. And our psalm today is Psalm 51. And our Proverbs is Proverbs chapter 10, verses 31 and 32. starting out with Jesus anointed at Bethany now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him but you already knew their plan didn't you brother Jesus but not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. 
She broke the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. Some of those presents were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor and they revoked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor will always have with you. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want but you would not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And so it is. Sorry, my mouth's really dry. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them. Oh, Judas. The Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house, he enters. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And that was where we're stopping with Mark for today, guys. Now we're on to our Psalm, Psalm 51. For the director of music, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was another man's wife. David was married as well, King David. Bathsheba was the wife of one of his best military men. And um, they was having an affair, you know, when he was off to war. And Bathsheba got pregnant by David. And David wanted, you know, her husband to think that it was his child. So he tried to get him to go home to her while he was back, came back for a little while. But he would not, he would not go home. He said, I am staying here, you know, at, at the his castle or whatever, where David reigned, David's home. He would not leave to go home. He would stay there and do his duties. And so David had um, Bathsheba's husband put on the front lines of the war 
that was getting ready, they were getting ready to fight and it was going to be really bad. And he had him put in the front so he would be killed and David wanted to make sure that he was killed. And God punished David for that by taking him and Bathsheba's firstborn, which was a son. So, I want you to set back, close your eyes, and listen to this song. Let it sink into your hearts and your souls, and just relax and listen. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my inequity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth sinful from the time my mother conceived me yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb you taught me wisdom in that secret place cleanse me with hyssop and i will be cleansed wash me and i will be whiter than snow let me hear joy and gladness let the bones you have crushed rejoice Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit with me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and concrete heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. You may open your eyes. That was a Psalm of David. Psalm 51. Our David's feeling very broken hearted for doing what he know is wrong and disobeying the Lord. But yet he still loved Bathsheba and when Bathsheba's husband was killed, David had him murdered. When he was killed, he married Bathsheba. He already had a couple wives before her as well. They were, you know, they all lived together. <clears throat> now we're ending today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 10, verses 31 and 32. From the mouth of the righteous comes the fruit of wisdom but a perverse tongue will be silenced. The lips of the righteous know what finds favor, but the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. Okay, guys, well, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. I hope you get to enjoy this beautiful day. Kelly, I don't know if you're watching or not, but it'd be a beautiful day for a walk on the flood wall or a bike ride. Um, let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, 
I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. I'm going to go lay down now. I love you guys. Bye. God bless.